Hello and welcome back to Butcher That Model. Well, it's been a week, hasn't it? Never mind. So, what are we going to do today? A couple of things. First thing we'll do is we'll say hello. So, what are we going to do? Oh, let's turn that off. Oh, I've got the volume on that. Right then. So, who have we got in today then? Dad's in, as always. Hello, Dad. But the first one in was Nat. So if Nat's in, there's a good chance that Connor and Paige are watching. So please, I remind everybody, please don't swear in the chat. Because they're at that age now where they can actually read. So please, mind your P's and Q's in the chat and everybody's going to be happy then. All right. Normally, I don't mind, but there's youngsters watching. Tommy might be watching downstairs. I don't know. He did tell me to say hello to everybody for him. So Tommy says hi. Right. right. So who else we got then? We got... Can you go for Mongols in? Oh, Jeff, you all right, mate? And Quantum Man's in. Quantum, thank you, thank you for being in you too. Scott Tim, up in the Orcadian lands, in the, the far distant blowy dwarfs. Right, so what we're going to do today, basic materials. This stuff is great. The two things you'll need more than anything else when you're basing is sharp sand and some form of gravel with this stuff this is bird sand you actually get both and this was one pound from a shop called wilkinson's in the uk but you can get it any pet store pets at home or something like that if you're in the states they will all sell this bird sand and what it is is a mixture of sharp sand and crushed shell and what we want to do is we want to separate it. So let's get separating. Very simple. Two box lids. Well, a box lid in the bottom. That's from the universal carrier that I've just done. We want them. And we want a sieve. And all we're going to do is sieve it. Now, you're never going to get all of the, the crushed shell out from the sand. But that's fine because it's the sizes, not the actual materials that we want. So you're about to get a few little bits of shell still in with your sand mix. But that's fine because it's the scale of it. And once you get it on the base and paint it, these scissors are useless. I need to get new scissors or sharpen these. Right, so I'm just going to go old simple. And just sieve it all out. And all we're doing is separating what's going to be our gravel and what's going to be our sand for basin. It's that simple. Like I said, you're never ever going to get all of the the shell. There's still going to be some that's going to fit through the sieve because it's the same size basically as the sand. And this amount, this one pound bag, not a pound in weight, a pound in money, is going to last you literally for years. Like there. There's not a lot of saving through. I mean, you could do it two or three times, but there's not a lot of point. It's not that we, we need pure sand and we need pure you know, shell for gravel. All that matters is the scale of it, and it's just all going to work. And there we go. Now, the, the mixture varies. I don't think they've got a set, you know, so many kilos of this stuff and so many kilos of this, the, the shell. Because last time I got more that than that, sort of thing. There's more of that than there is in this one. But anyway, I know you're going to do is just put it in containers, basically. And you've got enough basic material there, literally. To last you two or three years. 
And this stuff is fantastic. If you're doing stream beds or if you're doing road surfaces, it's fantastic. You can also make a dry stone wall that looks incredible with this stuff. And I might show you how to do that. Not today. We could do, I think that's what we'll do next week. We'll do next week, we'll do walls, hedges, and fences, basically, from scratch. So I won't bother separating that one. Oh, no, that's good. I'll do that off camera later on. Sort that out. But that is the way to get basic materials for miniatures for next to nothing for a pound. Oh, and a new sieve because obviously she's going to get the right one if you use her sieve out of the kitchen. Right, I'll put that in the fridge for a minute. There. Right, so let's get on to the main, the main event, which is going to be what that one is. How to create something like that? And everything there, apart from the goose and the pigeons, is scratch built. All of it is scratch built. So how do we do it? Well, the first thing we're going to use is we're going to have to get gather our materials. Now I use I use let's get a sheet of it. I use this stuff. This is XPS foam. It's huge that place, isn't it? I get it from a company called B and Q. In the UK, uh, you could get it if you're in the States from Home Depot or any DIY shop, we'll sell it. And it's basically insulation foam that you put in your house in between your walls. That's all it is. Now, the one I get from BQ is it's a four foot by three foot sheet. And this will confuse everyone now because I've just got feet and inches on the size of the sheet, and it's six millimeters thick. See, we like that in England. We'll use feet and inches, and then we'll use metric as well, because we're weird like that. And this stuff is a dream to work with. Absolute dream to work with. Oh, what's that? Just, uh, click that down. See, I'm not getting low on pigeons, Dave. Uh, Scott, thank you. I've still got about 80 to get through, but... I will find a use for those pigeons, don't you worry. Right, so let's start working on this stuff. Basically what we want to do is you want to cut your walls out and your gable ends. Simple, simple, simple. Now, for wargaming and for D&D &D sort of thing, you know, which for day of armors, your average figure, you want the walls to be about three inches high. So let's. This stuff is so simple to work with. Just need a pen. Definitely one that's going to work. Three inches. So this is sending a white balance scale. I know it is, but there's not a lot I can do about it. It's white. What can I do? It's white. And that should be three inches. There you go. We'll just do a line down the middle and we want it about I think this one about nine inches long. You can do it whatever size you want. And I tend to find that is about the right size for what I want for tabletop gaming. Nine inches. Nine inches. And nine inches. And that's going to give us our two walls. Yeah, looks a bit strange, that. Yeah, got a bit, a bit high there. Hang on. There. Right, and then we want our game lens. Well, we've got the width there already. We'll just extend that line up. 
So we want three inches to match the height of the wall, and then you want the peak. I think three inches again is about the right sort of pitch. You want so just three inches. And that, three inches from there. Right, that's our going to give us the height of our walls. Right. But we need to mark the three inches because this point, this point, and this point. What are you going to go on to? I'm going to go about. We'll do this one a bit shallow actually. Two and a half inches. Yeah, let's do this one at two and a half. We won't make it quite a higher pitched roof. Let's draw that up there. Two and a half inches on this side. Doing it half inches on this side. Let's carry on going off. Now, what we want is we want to measure halfway between each one of these. So, an inch and a half. And an inch and a half. And then just join those two up. And that will give us a picture of our roof. And now all we need to do now is obviously cut those out. Now, you want one of these. Don't use your exacto knife, a short blade. You want a long blade for cutting this stuff. And you want to do it at a really shallow angle. And don't go all the way through on your first pass. Do two or three passes and let virtually the weight of the knife do it. And it will give you a far neater cut. I'm trying to go three in one. So end up. Pulling chunks out of it. It's not as bad as polystyrene you get from packaging that's like the bobbly things. You can cut it slowly like that, but it's, uh, it's a nuisance to work with. You end up with bobbles everywhere. So basically, a couple of passes through, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Put angles. Angle, and that's one gable end going to be done then. You can never work with this stuff, you've got a nice pleasant surprise. It's really nice to work with. Now, this one I got. Quite, it's quite dense, it's quite hard. You can get some. The pink, the pink stuff is a lot softer than this. And you can do even more stuff with that because you can, this stuff you have to carve into. The pink stuff, because it's softer, you can actually move into it and then push down. So if you were doing like stones or bricks, you could draw your shape on it and then use a a pen without the nib out and score around a little bit and then physically push the odd block in and it gives you more of a 3d relief this stuff's quite you can do it with this but it's very dense and it's it's not as easy to do that's a second gable a second clock gable And then, boom. And our two holes. Now you could, if you wanted to, 
doing it all together now. Build it now. Always remember, if you're doing it this way, just, just, just think to remember you're doing it. If you do it on the inside, all right, like that, it's not so bad. If you do it, you put that inside, the gable on the inside, what you then have to do is chamfer this edge because you've got your roof to go on it, otherwise, you'll end up with a lump. You don't want the lump. All right, so how do we stick this stuff together? Really simple really simple but this is another one of those techniques where you need drying time what you need to do PVA glue line a PVA glue on it line up your face All right. I'll stand there like that's fine what I tend to do is your face dressmaker's pins? These are fabulous because what you can do with these, you just pin it together. And that will quite happily hold there overnight or a couple of hours or whatever you want to do. It's not going to fall off. It's fantastic. Dressmaker's pins, just pin it together and then take it to one side and you can leave it to dry. Ammo nails, no, that ammo nails, no. Similar, it's not actually nailing it, but it's just pins to hold it. That's the white balance for scattered on it. Right, so what we'll do is we'll put that to one side now because that's doing that white balance is uh, a pain. And in true weekly style, what I've done, I've lost a piece now, what I've done is I painted them black earlier. Where's that piece? I've done it again, Dad. There it is. Get that down there. Come here. Come here. Right. So the next thing we want to do is we want to put our frontage on. Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay. Really simple to do. What you do, depending on the style you want to do, I quite like the, the wooden and plaster effect. And what I tend to do is I shall get some... I'm not really organised for the hammer. Let's get some foam. Where have I put those? Oh dear. Uh, I'm on one end day. No, nope, it's not there. What have I done with them? Oh, they're here. Duh. I painted some brown. And I put the... Uh, the grain in. So how do you put the grain in? Now, I did this before, I showed you before when we did the the D and D tiles. Really simple to do. Let's get a piece of this. Let's get a piece of the white again. Set the white bands. Let's just cut a piece off. Now you could use if you had one. A suede brush, which is like a very large toothbrush with copper bristles. All right, and then just rub it over it. All right. Now I haven't got one of those. I don't possess suede shoes. Dad may have a pair of blue suede shoes. I don't know. That might sort of thing. So what you want to do is get yourself. Some toothpicks or cocktail sticks, as we call them over here. Toothpicks. Line them up and literally put a little bit of pressure on. And as you're going down, just wiggle it a little bit. There's some strides, some wiggles. And that will put 
that will drain effect into the foam. Now you probably can't see that at the moment. But you will in a second when I put that brown. Now let's get a manky old brush. If you don't use good brushes, it's a moldy brown craft paint. Right. Bit thick, actually. Down a little bit. There we go. Just slap some on there just to show you. See that now? It's a dull grain in it now. Once you've painted that, let it dry and then give it a wash. That literally pops out. Give it a wash and dry brush it with a lighter brown. Absolutely fantastic. It's a really effective and simple way of doing it. Let's paint it brown. A bit like this sounds, but brown not black. There we go. Simple, isn't it? Simple. Very effective. Very simple. So flip that in there. Right, then what you want to do? Is you want some of these? The strips of it. So basically, get your thing you've done, get your ruler, and just vary sizes. Vary the sizes of it. And just start cutting slithers of it. And you're going to use this then. For your timber framing on your doorways, your windows, your Georgian panels. And half again. And you're basically just going to clad. No, we don't need that many. You're just going to clad your flat surfaces with it. So let's do this side. What we'll do, we'll cut out. What are we doing anyway? Yeah, Shane, that, that, those, the suede bushes are for suede shoes, mate, not for your teeth. All right. It's similar with the toilet brushes. I mean, we got bought one, a really nice toilet brush set about three Christmases ago. Fantastic, lovely. It's like chrome, beautiful. Yeah. I've gone back to paper, but Pip's persevering with it. I was the best. Right, so let's cut out a window. Really simple, really simple to do. The next door to kids are playing. They've got a birthday next door. We're around later on after this. Because that's our bubble. Here's the next door. Great. They've got slightly more kids than we've got, believe it or not. And we share the gardens. We put put a fence in, put a new a new fence in with a gate between it, so we can just go between the gardens. And the kids all play together. It's fantastic, it's great. So we're we'll going next door after this. We've got we we'll play Shadow Sphere. No play Shadow Sphere yet. So right, and I'm gonna. This is really strange now. I'm going to cut into it where I want the timbers and windows to go. And see why in a minute. I'm then going to get make that. Where's 
them key players in. Let me snip that off of that. So about the height that we want about there. I don't really measure when I'm doing this, it's all just actually by eye. So that's nice ball squares. I'm going to slide him in. He goes in the middle. Same that, cut that there. And then what I need my pen. I need to mark where that is. In the middle of that's there. Snippy. Coffee servers are great. Another good crafting material to get your hands on. That's so cheap to buy on the flea base on Amazon. A bag of a thousand for about a fiver. And they'll last you. That number will last you a very, very long time. It's so much better than going to the Costco and just stealing them. And there we go. That's I'm in the framing. Have a PVA on it. Remember that bit, wiggle it, PVA where we want it. Clean it up a little bit. And that's that window. Pretty much done. What I tend to do then is I tend to get a bit of plastic. Don't throw plastic, clear plastic packaging away. Save a bit of it. I'll try and use the other scissors. I might actually cut a bit better. Perfectly neat because it's going inside, and you're never going to see it anyway. Basically, you just want to glue that bit of clear plastic on the inside, mix it with a bit of PVA, a bit of PVA on it. I'll just leave that then, and you've actually glazed the windows. Simple, isn't it? Just save things, save silly little things, like bits of plastic, you know, packaging, you know, blister pack, and things like that. So much better. Right, and then what we want to do, well, I've made our door earlier, but I'll do the same later, I'll do a back door in a bit. That's been drying over the morning, so I should hopefully take the pins out. It should be nice and stucky together now. But Matt, you should be alright doing this. You should have dressmaker's pins. Oh, Shane's in. Hello, Shane. Oh, no, that's popped off there then. Pull that a bit hard. Nothing a bit of PVA won't fix. It wants to lift for some bizarre reason. What I'll do then is get some glue on the edge of it. Same with this edge. Mm -hmm. 
Ich denke mir, naja. Now we have our door in place. So all we're going to do now is we're going to literally start playing with this stuff. And then frame it up. And it won't. Just do it by eye. Because at the end of the day, what, you, what we're trying to achieve, we're not trying to achieve a perfect architectural designed building. We're building a fantasy building that's set in a medieval setting. But we're still going to give it that cartoon element because it's fantasy. So you don't want it to look ultra realistic. I mean, you could if you want, it's entirely true. I just prefer my wargaming stuff to look cartoony. That's just the way I like it. The PVA. Move it up, get the pins. Put a couple of pins in it. Ever so simple. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. Absolutely correct, Jeff. If you was to buy, you go, you go to a, a model railway supplies and start buying materials and that, it soon adds up. It really does add up. I mean, you can get some beautiful stuff. I mean, you can buy resin doors for D and D stuff, you know. And they are fantastic. They are beautiful. But if you can create your own for a tenth of the price, why wouldn't you? You know. You got at the end of the day that's what we're here for we, we, we like we like model making we like crafting so to us it makes more sense to us to craft our own than it does i mean some people haven't got they haven't got the skills or the patience or the time or the effort or the energy to do it so they'll go out and buy it and then they'll pay the premium price for it mate at the end of the day don't they so i just prefer doing it like this make me own. Yeah. i've got the time i've got the patience why wouldn't i do it you know why wouldn't any of us do it and it adds to the fun of it when you if you do gaming and you invite friends around to have a, a game of D&D &D one night and you've done everything on that table and created it all it gives you a real a real buzz it really does give you a real buzz you know, people come around and say oh, that's amazing and I did one the other week and it was the entire village I had an entire village set out on my on my kitchen table with a, just a green I bought a piece of green base from a, a dressmaking shop, like four meters, and it just fits over the top of my entire table. And I just put the stuff on top of it, and uh, it looked good. I must admit, it did look good, and it gives you a bit of a, gives me a bit of a buzz. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I created that. It's a world art. They're using their imagination as well to create the world that you're playing in. But it's physically so much to look at. It's like yeah, that's cool. This is cool. And put a whole village down, <laughs> ten or twelve buildings, and a and a statue in the middle of the. You know. It looks good, right? So we'll do that. Another one across the top. I find a nice one. That's a nice one. Let's go right across the top of there. Right there. It's quite boring, then, watching me doing this. Sorry, it's not what you meant to do this. So, if anybody's bored with this at the moment, it's Natalie's fault. Okay, see what I did. I'll sit that there, stick a couple of pins in it. Oh, somebody's day been like today then so far what's your day been like anything exciting happened so 
do that while I I'll stick another piece on and give you time to put some in chat. Oh, we've got nine people watching. Who's coming then? Somebody's coming to me. Must have snuck in. Uh, say hello in chat if you if you, if you haven't said hello. Nobody really bites in here. Well, a little bit. Dad might. It's upsetting me bites. But generally, Dad doesn't bite. Matt doesn't. Say hello in chat. Do us a favour, like and subscribe, and hit the bell button and. And give a thumbs up if you like to. I never really, never really bother saying that. I should do, I suppose, you know. But yeah, hit the like and subscribe if you like. Don't want to miss out on what's coming in the next few weeks. The next week will be still on this. Next week we'll be doing the roof. Hopefully. We will. We'll be doing the roof next week. And then the week after that, I'll show you how to do walls and fences and hedges and ways of dividing up a gaming table. All right, next thing we want to do is we want to frame our window. So we want to there, to about there, and about there. I never measure. Once I've got my first, hello, Lynn. Once I've got my first build, the, you know, the sizes of the building, when it comes to things like this, I never measure it. I'll just eye it. I probably should measure, I suppose, but to me, it gives it that more of a medieval rustic look. Put a pin in that. Pin in that. Same here. About there. About. Not about good there. That there wants to be there. Super simple to do this. It just gives it a nice popped three D effect as well. Now there are other ways of doing this, other materials you can use to do this. If you are better than me with wood, instead of doing all this timber things with this XPF form, you can actually do it with timber and just use coffee stairs. And then stain it. And that would look absolutely stunning. I have this agreement. We and, we and wood have an agreement. I won't try and mess with wood and wood won't split on me. And so far, I've lost 40 years or so, it's been working out really well. Right, so that's basically our front done. Apart from how we're going to create the plaster. Super simple. Once again, it's my old favourite, the all-purpose filler. And what we need to do is we need to water it down a little bit on the top. Let's take a bit of water on it. Oh, that's a bit brown. Oops. No mind. Work it, work it, work it. Now I've put a little bit of brown in there, which is fine because that'll help us out in a bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to get messy with it. And we're literally going to paint it on. Well, it's better now it's brown because that's not going to send the white balance to sky. We're literally going to 
and that on the plaster. And this will give two effects. This will give the effect of, you know, how the buildings actually look in real life with a plaster in between the, especially with Georgian type buildings. But it'll also give it strength. Because once this hardens up, so it's like concrete, doesn't it? So it'll give it a bit more, a bit more strength, like that. Now, all we've got to do now is set this piece aside and let it dry. And then once it's dry, you can just paint it like I've done with that side. See how simple that is? Really effective. Very simple to do, really effective. So we'll put that on one side to dry. And we'll work on the back of the house. Back of the farm we have now. We've got nothing on there. And it's a black canvas. Blank canvas. You can do whatever you want to that. You can put doors where you want, windows where you want. And let's do that. Let's do what we have, a quarter two. Have we gone? Blimey, we've gone in 45 minutes already. It's gone quick, hasn't it? So, we've got the front door in the center of the front of the house, and the back door put to one side. So, what we'll do is we'll mark out uh, about inch and three quarters. Now it's about the right height for a door for this sort of. Let's come in a little bit. Let's do it about there, and I'll leave us some room to put panel in. Yeah, get some panels in. It wants to be about an inch and a quarter wide. Yeah, inch and a quarter. That's about right. I need an inch and a half then. We need a very lopsided door. Right then, so let's come across there. And we'll cut it out. And I'll show you what I do. A little secret I do with it. And put him out. Am I on camera still? I must be doing all right today because Dad's not shouted once about soft camera. Well, he normally does. Get on camera, you idiot. Fox is on the three, just let you know. Mate. Okay, so I'll be finished with three. Yeah, thanks, Dad. I'll finish it. If I finish about two or three minutes to three, it'll give you a chance to go and find Foxy's on it and have a quick, a quick wee. What's Fox doing anyway? It's Thursday, he's supposed to do Fridays. Little tinker. So what I'm going to do now, I'm doing now is I'm going to I'm cutting this door into half widthways. Very carefully. You don't want to take your fingers off when you're doing this bit. Just remember these things are sharp, the cheap, but the sharp. Chop it in half. Right. Then we'll get our, our cocktail sticks again and we'll put some some wood grain in the door. I didn't turn my phone off like an idiot, did I? Don't, Dad. Don't even think about it. Let me just... Before Mr. Mountain phones me up, just to say. You left your phone on, you idiot. Power off. There we go. We're safe again now. We're safe. Right, so we'll leave that there. Right, so we put the, the wood effect in my door. Now what we want to do is we want to give it some framing. Try and find a brown one that's 
from a nice thin get out there that one all right so we'll frame the door just doing the same way we'll just my ball it's got that piece there I want the same on that side, aren't we? Yeah, we could get posh with this door. We could. I'm tempted to go posh with this door. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Stick that there for a second. I don't know why I haven't thought of doing this before actually. I'm going to get my knife. I'm going to cut this door in half. Because if this is a a medieval cottage, why wouldn't the back door have like the cottage doors for its stable doors? Right, let's put a pin in there. Not that we're going to have it so we can open and close it. We'll have the bottom close. When we build it, we'll have the bottom close and the, the top open. And that. Get a pin in there. Stick the pin in there. Well, we've got 47. We've got 10 minutes left. So, well, I'm doing this. I'm trying to recall now what we've got this week. Who's on what this week? Uh, obviously, Fox is on at three o'clock. I've got no idea what he's doing. I'm, is he? What's he doing, Dad? Is he doing his uh, Millennium Falcon? <laughs> the door bed, hopefully. No, no, we'll leave it as a wooden door. Don't forget, this is somewhat medieval or that sort of ilk. It's a little farm coil. Ooh. Why have I got a needle in there? That must be Kimberly making her teddy bears and things. And that's a very deformed pin. The head of that's been through sure the machine wrong. It's squishied. All right, so what we want to do now, that's the door there. We need to put a piece in there. Let's just make it up, line it up. And the same again, it'll be the same size for the bottom bit. There, oh, that long, I think. That's right, because it's very easy to trim this stuff, whatever size you want. Point him in there, stick a pin in it. Seriously, this is so easy to do, this guys, and 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 that very, very easy to do. I don't believe how cheap this is to do. That this extruded foam, this XPS foam, it came in. I can't remember how many sheets? Six sheets that were four foot by three foot. And it was just under, it was pennies under £17. Now that might sound like 17 quid or what's hmm. But that's given me, I've still got that sheet left, and I've made I think I'm trying to work out how many actually buildings I've made in the past. Nine? Ten. Nine buildings. 
and I've lost count of how many dungeon tiles I've actually made out of that 17 pound pack of foam. Um, PVA glue from Poundlands a pound, a set of pins and some cheap craft paint and you can build anything, absolutely anything. Oh, thank you. Did you actually, Lynn, did you actually see the farm? Oh, Chris, oh, Chris. I don't think you actually, I don't think you've ever seen the farm, have you, Lynn? Let's have a look, let's go on. Let's grab me on the floor. There you go. One medieval farmhouse. I'm just using these techniques that we're using now. And next week, I'll show you how we roof them. And it's so simple, it's incredible. It's incredibly simple to do. You'd be surprised how, how cheap and simple that is. Right. So we've got nine minutes before Monsieur Fox is on. So we've got, let's have a think, what would some recap? So we got, what day we on? Thursday. So tonight is Chris or Ted. Lynn's off to work. All right, bye, Lynn. Finipping in, Chuck. Have a safe day at work, all right? So I'm, I'm really having to work out who's, who's, there's that many of us doing stuff this week, it's unreal. So, it's Chris tonight, or is it Ted tonight? Chris will let us know in the chat in a second. Uh, Friday, Fox is... Uh, is Fox ever going to do his Fallout Friday? I think. Check out... Have a look on the boom. We'll see if Fox is doing Fallout Friday. Hey, anytime, Jeff. Anytime, it's a pleasure. Uh, me evening with... I'm working tomorrow, Chris. I've got to go to bed early tonight. Unfortunately, I'm back back at work tomorrow. So I shall be in bed at nine o'clock, mate. Sorry. That's the only down I I'm going to get up and early and go to work in the morning. So Chris, yeah, Chris tonight. Friday is Fallout Friday, we think. With Fox. Uh Nat on Friday evening. Oh yeah, Foxy Pen on his face, yeah. Yeah. And Chris on eight. Chris starts at eight, yeah. So there we go. Don't don't you know. Don't forget, go and nip in and say hello to Chris this evening. He'll be pleased of the company, and I'm sure we all are. We're all pleased of the companies when you come on. And we give Chris some stick. I'm I'm one of the biggest culprits for giving Chris some stick, but he's a good bloke, he deserves some support. So go go and watch Chris tonight. He's not a bad lad, really. He's not a bad fella. It's in our contract as, as mods and that. We have to give each other stick and hassle. Otherwise, Paul tells us off we're not doing it. It's all Paul's fault. And then, what day is we on that? Then Saturday? Saturday. What's happening Saturday? Saturday evening is the crash. With... Mr. Skiffins and Carl and Steve and Lewis, if he's in from work. I never have to have me call the big biggest what? I don't mean call the big I've certainly never been called the biggest. Uh I should have wrote down what so who's on what because my brain's gone. I'm having a, a, a moment now as to who's doing what. Uh Sunday, Sunday is uh, Colin and Dave with the, with the Sunday brunch. I recommend seeing that. It's fantastic. Go and watch Colin and Dave and some shenanigans that they're getting up to. Uh, Fox is then on. And then I can't remember what it is then. I can't remember who's doing anybody. Yeah, Saturday night's the, the, the crash. Well, Sunday, that Sunday. I'm getting confused now. Sunday, twelve half twelve to two. It's Colin and Dave. Then it's Fox again with his his uh, Warhammer. Warhammer Sunday. 
Dad's then on at quarter past six at six o'clock, is it? For his six fifteen, yeah. Dad's yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Dad's six fifteen for his between show shows. Uh and I can't after that. After that, what's on? Oh, and then Chris is on at ten at nine. Oh, it's ten at nine. Ted's on at nine o'clock on Sunday. And then Monday it's e-models, and then Tuesday it's uh, Phil, primetime modelling, with special guest appearances from two weirdos. So will just turn up. With two weirdos, just, Tony stunt doubles, we'll just turn up. And that's your weekly viewing for this week. It's now nearly five to three. So I'm going to leave it at that, because Fox is on in five minutes' time. Give you a chance to go and have a big wee and get yourself organised and ready for Foxy's show. I don't know what he's doing now. Is it the Falcon he's doing? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. I've lost track. I can't remember who's doing what. There's that much of us. We need a radio time. We need a modeler's radio times as to what's on in the week. And I shall be back on this. What I'll do is I'll finish, I'll finish the walls. And then next week on this, what we'll do is we'll do the roof. All right. So thank you all for watching. You've been wonderful. Thank you all for not swearing. And keeping Nat's kids safe. Nat tomorrow, eight o'clock, yeah. Dexterous Crafter will be dexterous in, doing little dexterous things with a very nice diamond art. I don't know why it's called diamond art, because it's plastic art and the little tiny plastic things. But yeah, it's very clever. It's very, Pip, my wife's doing one now of her uh, grandmother. Dave, 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 what? Some great tips, Shane. You're welcome. Anyway, right, go on. Three minutes. Go and have a wee in that and see Fox, and I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye. Have you gone yet? Go, on, go then. I can't find the button. Where's it? Oh, was I end up? I found it. Right. I'll see you next week.